Hey everybody, happy Monday. Happy Monday everyone, coming to you live from the YouTube studio instead of down in the fish room, but we've got a cool video for you in store today. And what is that video? These fish should not be kept in a 20 gallon tank. Or less. And the purpose behind this video is we were talking about fish that you commonly see at the big box stores, the Pet Smarts, the Petco's, even your local fish store. And there's a lot of confusion on the internet with some of these fish and the minimum tank size requirements. And we feel these are fish that often get put into a 20 gallon or less and it's probably going to be an issue later on. What's the first one? Well, angelfish. How many people love angelfish and when you go to the fish store, they almost always will have a tank filled with tiny little adorable angelfish. So why wouldn't they fit in the 20 gallon, right? Absolutely, from the start it sure looks like they will. They're about the size of a nickel or maybe a quarter. What a lot of people don't fully appreciate is angelfish, the veil tails can get a foot tall. The bodies themselves can be the size of the palm of your hand and when they get that large, if they don't have enough space, they can be a little bit aggressive. These are fish best left for larger tanks of at least 40 gallons, if not 55 gallons or greater. So while angelfish are awesome, it might not be a great choice for those smaller 20 gallons or less. Next one to consider, I think, is some of your gouramis. Not all of them. In fact, we've done lots of species profiles on the fish that we're going to mention. We'll put those in the description below. But there are a lot of different types of gouramis. I think ones that are good for a 20 gallon might be your honey gourami, maybe even your dwarf gourami. But what I'm talking about here are some of the larger ones, mm -hmm. right? Like your golds, your opalines, your blue gouramis, the ones that get to be around four or five inches and they can be quite aggressive when they get to that size. Now, another one that you almost always will see at a pet store is the tiger barb. It has a lot of color. It's, it's a very small little fish, so why not put them in a 20 gallon tank? Yeah, the problem with the tiger barb is one, they really do need to be kept in groups and the groups need to be fairly large. If you keep them in the typical, just keep them in you know, a quantity of six or so, uh, you'll be fine. That's usually not the case. The tiger barbs will often pick each other off until you only have one. To prevent that, you often need a group of at least 20 or more and they do actually get somewhat large. So probably a little bit larger than you'd want for a 20 gallon or less, you know, somewhere around that three inch size, two and a half to three inches at least, and again, the large group necessitates that they have some more space. So tiger barb is probably not a great option. Another one that comes to mind, and these, this is a really tough one because I love these fish. I did a species profile a long time ago. That's the red-tailed shark. Uh. That also includes the rainbow shark. So I'm including both the red tail and the rainbow sharks here. And when you see them at the pet sp Pet, the, like the Pet Smarts, the Pet Co's, the local fish stores, they're really cute, right? They're maybe an inch or two. So They've got this beautiful blue body with these nice red tails and you know, with the red, rainbow shark, you get the red dorsal fin as well. These are not good fish to put in those smaller tanks. And depending on where you look on the internet, those tank sizes are really messed up. I personally don't recommend anything less than about a four foot tank. And those inhabitants really should be semi-aggressive to aggressive fish because especially the red-tailed sharks, when they get to be six or seven inches after they grow up full size, they can be somewhat aggressive, not somewhat, very aggressive. Now the next one, I would think, if you're a beginner, this one will probably surprise you and that would be the molly. Now we did recently do a video of uh, mollies versus platies. Yeah, and one of the things I think we brought up was the tank size. Tank size, and again, this one's kind of a borderline one. I know some of you are going to be out there like, oh, I've kept mollies in a 20 gallon. It was fine. And I understand that, but some of you, I'm sure, will leave comments as well saying, "Yeah, my mollies got aggressive, and they tend to be a little bit more aggressive than your guppies and your platies and your endlers." And so this on this list is a little bit more of a borderline fish. But if you want to maximize your success, they're best left for larger tanks. And I mentioned, we mentioned in the platies versus mollies videos, like the sail fin mollies, they can get to be five inches or six inches. And so that's far yeah. too large for your typical 20 gallon tank. Mm -hmm. Another one I think that some people would, most people would consider as a beginner fish, very, very common, and that is the goldfish. We get asked this question all the time, hey, what size tank for a goldfish? Whether we're talking about comet goldfish, common goldfish, or the fancies, all of them would do best in at least a 40 gallon tank or larger. And some of the comets and commons, 
you're looking at significantly larger tanks because these fish get large over time. They're messy eaters. They're constantly stirring up the, the stuff in the substrate, but these are large fish. In fact, we had some goldfish in a 40 gallon breeder that we eventually gave to somebody with a pond because even that 40 gallon breeder long term was going to be far too small for those fish. So if you're thinking about goldfish, you should also be thinking about at least a four foot tank. Now the next fish is a fish that's really, really cool. A lot of people may really love this fish, the Chinese algae eater. Yeah, Chinese algae eaters are very common. You go to your pet smarts, your pet co's, and they, I need something that's gonna eat algae, and the Chinese algae eater go. is there. There's a few problems with this fish. Mm -hmm. Like the red tail shark, these guys get aggressive as they get older, and it's not uncommon for them to fight with other fish and suck the slime coat off of fish and leaving patches everywhere, and plus they get larger. I mean, it's not uncommon to see Chinese algae eaters at eight to 10 inches. We've had them in our 150 gallon tanks with African cichlids, which actually worked out quite well. But these are fish that are best left for experienced fish keepers that have at least that four foot tank and the right setup and other tank mates for those fish. Which reminds me, hmm. another one that you're gonna see at the Petco's, the Pet Smarts, and that's those beautiful, tiny, ultra cute, extremely colorful cichlids, mostly the African cichlids. You'll often yeah. see them as the mixed African cichlids. They're in Buddha cichlids. And they're, again, they're small, usually about an inch, inch and a half, and they look amazing and they're all active and they're greeting you as you walk up to the tank. Big mistake, putting these fish in anything typically less than around a 40 breeder or so. And the reason for that is Ambuna cichlids are not like your typical tropical fish. They get territorial, they get aggressive, very assertive, best left for one, the experienced fish keeper, and two, a fish keeper that's gonna have ample space for them. We have a 75 gallon Ambuna community tank that's been set up for many, many years, and it's worked out very good, but it's a 75 gallon tank. I would never even consider doing that in something like a 20 gallon fish tank. Now another fish that is really cute if you see it at the pet store, and you say, I want that, and it's really goofy, and it's colorful, so it'll, it'll suck you right in. The clown loach <laughs> might get a little larger than you think. Yeah, those clown loaches are, are great fish. And just like the red tail shark, they do usually, when you see them at the pet store, they're, they're usually pretty small Cute. around that one, two inch range, maybe two and a half inches. The problem long-term is they get large and they can get up to a foot long. Now it takes a very long time for them to grow. We've got clown loaches, a group of them in our 150, and the largest one might be around seven inches. And that fish is probably closing in on 10 years old which is another point, yeah. these fish can live a long time and you're definitely gonna need them, one, in a group, and two, provide space for them. Usually long-term, that means a six-foot tank. And so I know they look small and I know a lot of places on the internet and even some of the labels on some of the tanks at some of the, the stores we've been to recommend much smaller tanks than they need long-term. This is one best left for when you have a large tank for them to grow out in long-term. All right, this last one, has an interesting story and why does it have such an interesting story? Because I think this is probably one of the ones that I had to have early on, had to have it. I remember specifically going to the pet store and you love these fish and that was the Buenos Aires Tetra and we're using this as an example. Um, that is larger tetras and the Buenos Aires Tetra is a larger tetra that will get to be about three inches, two and a half to three inches. But beyond that, they can also be very nippy and just like the tiger barb, they tend to, the, the weakest one tends to get singled out and picked on until it is no longer with you. And so this necessitates a very large group. Again, not uncommon to have 15, 20, 25 of these in a tank because they are a little bit aggressive, they're definitely fin nippy and they need those larger groups. This is once again, best left these fish for at least a four foot tank. Now we did have them in a 75 gallon mm -hmm. and that was pretty cool and they were wonderful fish. But when you're getting into these larger Tetras, again, the Buenos Aires Tetra is just an example. You just wanna be careful, make sure you've got the space for them. So those were 10 fish that you will see commonly at your big box stores, local fish stores that often People want to put them in smaller tanks, but you should probably think twice for their overall well-being. Again, if you want more information, check out the description below. we got all kinds of species profiles for you. Appreciate you being here. We'll see you in the next one. Bye.